We're back at Disneyland. Here you leave today and enter the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and tomorrow. Welcome to Tomorrowland. I'm up here in the future on the second story of Interventions to talk about an intervention from the past. Between here and the Matterhorn, there is nothing but a walkway. But at one time, there was an attraction here. Attraction? Behind me, well actually kind of below me, is the Utopia Winter Circle Gift Shop. And what is now empty space above it used to be the station for the most terrifying, the most extreme, well, at least to me, attraction in Disneyland. The Skyway. Now, if you've been to any big theme parks, zoos, or county fairs in the last 30 years, you probably are familiar with a Skyway. But for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, a Skyway basically consists of these buckets which are attached to cables suspended between poles way high off the ground. And what you do is you travel along the cable way up in the sky, getting an aerial view of everything, and if you're me, completely terrified out of your mind. Disneyland Skyway traveled all the way from Tomorrowland to Fantasyland, or from Fantasyland to Tomorrowland. Now Disneyland's attractions are known for being unique, and in the era when Skyways populated the landscape, people probably wondered, what the heck is Disneyland doing with the Skyway? I mean, those things are so commonplace. Well, the fact is, in June of 1956, when the Skyway opened, it was a marvel of modern technology. Now one thing about Walt Disney is he was obsessed with transportation, especially the transportation of the future. When Disneyland was born in the 19th 50s, it was born into the golden age of futurism. Many of the attractions here, like the Utopia or the submarines that we think of as being kind of commonplace, were actually cutting edge technology and visions of the future in the 1950s. For example, the Utopia was meant to depict futuristic freeways. Of course, we have them now, but that doesn't change the fact that back then it was super, super sci fi. Ursula? Now, being obsessed with futuristic and alternative transportation, it comes as no surprise that when Walt Disney found out the Von Roll Company was making these skyways in Switzerland, he had to have one for his new park. Super high suspension poles were placed between Tomorrowland and Fantasyland to hold up the massive cables that were part of the skyway. It promised and delivered a fantastic aerial view of the park. In 1958, when they started planning the construction of the Matterhorn, they realized they had a problem. The Matterhorn horn was right smack dab in the middle of the path for the Skyway. Now given that the Skyway was so popular, they didn't want to tear it down and move it somewhere, so they actually built the Matterhorn around the Skyway without ever closing the Skyway once. In fact, instead of going around, they did something ten times more awesome, which was to have the Skyway pass through the Matterhorn through giant caves on either side. So not only were you getting an aerial view of Disneyland now, but now you were getting a look inside of the Matterhorn at all those screaming bobsledders. He was here. He knows. Throughout its whole history, the Sky Ride was extremely popular. So it came as a huge surprise when in 1994, Disneyland announced that the Skyway would be taking its last journey. They were like, what the duck? Looking for an explanation, many people speculated that the Sky Ride was shut down because too many people fell out of it to their deaths. The urban legend persists till this very day, but in actual fact, in all those years of operation, the Sky Ride never had one single accident. Well, except of course for the time this one guy actually jumped out of it on purpose and ended up landing in that tree and really hurting himself. He tried to sue, but then he gave up because he realized that he was just being stupid. That's what rules are for, people. Now, Disney's reasoning behind the closure was that Indiana Jones was opening up soon and that they needed the staff from the Skyride to operate Indiana Jones. Now that actually makes a lot more sense than it sounds like. Sometimes, to offset the cost of opening up new attractions here, they close down old ones. It saves on operational costs, and it'll, it helps them afford the new attractions. Simple explanations like this were never good enough for Disney fans, though. I mean, come on, the Skyway was just too popular. But thanks to the research of Disney nerds everywhere, we now know that the main Skyway support inside the Matterhorn was in need of serious repairs. Now at that point, you pretty much have two options. Option number one, close the Skyway. Or number two, tear down the entire Matterhorn to fix it from the inside. Obviously, they went with option number one. And since 2014 is the 20th anniversary of its closing, I thought we would take a look at what's left to tell the tale of the Disneyland Skyway. Just across the road from the Village House restaurant is the most famous relic of the Skyway, the Fantasyland Station. 
For 20 years, thousands of parkgoers have passed right by the Fantasyland Station, perhaps wondering what the heck it is. But over the years, the trees have grown up around it, and you can barely see it up there now. Now guys, I know you want to see the inside, but I'm not one to break the rules. But down in the description below, I'll post a link to Dave Land's website, and you can check out some pretty recent photos of the inside of the empty and abandoned Skyway Station. You can clearly see that all kept up pretty well for an abandoned station. It's uh, It's been weathered over the years. Even the walkway starting to look a little bit crooked and unstable. And the rumor is they're probably going to bulldoze it. It'll be sad to see it go, but at the same time, maybe it'll make room for another attraction. Perhaps this is a good time to mention that this was actually two rides. Each way was counted as a separate ride and you had to have a separate ticket. Now for more about tickets, check out the last video I did. If you left from Fantasyland, you were actually riding the Skyway to Tomorrowland. And if you left from the Tomorrowland station and came to Fantasyland, you were riding the Skyway to Fantasyland. Just think the back wind over our heads right now would be all these crazy buckets. No spitting. Right here, next to Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, where the line begins, is a relic of the Forgotten Skyway. Now remember, the Skyway was supported by these huge poles that held up the cables that the buckets would run on. And one of those huge poles was located right in this line area. Once the ride was removed, all of those poles were removed with it and mostly paved over. But the pylon that was located in what's now the queue area for Mr. Toad's Wild Ride was actually replaced by that little square planter. And to this very day, that awkward square planter remains as a reminder of what used to be. Buckets everywhere. Hey, was that spit? Of course, one of the major relics of the Skyway is the holes through the Matterhorn. But after the Matterhorn's renovation, most of the holes were all shut up. Now, even though I guess it makes the mountain look a lot more realistic to have the holes all plugged up, it's too bad because Walt Disney had a great excuse for those holes. When asked why his mountain had so many holes, he said, well, it's a Swiss mountain, isn't it? Interestingly enough, the Matterhorn is a Swiss mountain and the Skyway was developed and built by a company from Switzerland. Jawohl, I knew the Swiss were behind this. Johnny Depp? Yeah, even though they're camouflaged pretty well, those little pig nose holes give you a pretty good idea of the path of the Skyway through the Matterhorn. Travis Barker? Now before the addition of the carousel theater that houses interventions these days, the Skyway to Fantasyland had its own standalone station back here. The loading platform for the Sky Ride over here was sadly demolished, but we still have the crazy stairway to nowhere over here to remind us of all those fantastic flights over Disneyland. Once a part of the entrance for the ride is now sitting there forlorn and abandoned. Well, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this journey through the abandoned relics of the Disneyland Skyway. Make sure to subscribe for future videos. Check out the last video over here, and I'll see you next time. Bye -bye. <gasps> a grapefruit.